So, um, Tom Sachs, one of my favorite um, artists out there, has this a interesting documentary as that's I think available now on his web store. It's called um, How to How to Surf. I'm pretty sure it's called How to Surf or Learning How to Surf. I've got the trailer here. I'm going to pr- quickly pop up onto the screen for you guys to read and check out. But I think there's a really cool lesson to be kind of gleaned from this or one of the cool little steps I think we might actually see itself applied in other fields. Let's quickly check out the trailer. I think the trailer is up on Vimeo. Um, but I think the whole movie is available to buy or to purchase or to view on his actual web store. So let's quickly check it out here regardless. So this is the movie or the trailer for it. It's, it's titled How to Learn... How to learn how to surf, which is an interesting title, right? It's not called how to surf or how to learn how to surf. It's called how to learn how to surf, right? A Tom Sykes theory movie, which I said the thing twice, but who cares? Let's play anyway, and I'll quickly tell you what I think lessons can be gleaned from this. This is a movie about bad surfers on the long, painful road to becoming okay surfers. We range in ability from first-time greenhorns to 20-plus year veterans. We are, all of us, bad. We, all of us, have bad attitudes. Well, all of us but Sarah. Each of us has come with a goal, a surfing goal. I just want to learn to enjoy it. Jump onto another huh. surfer's board. Ride the blue wave. Look cool in a picture. So, I think that was pretty cool, right? So, pretty cool idea, pretty cool movie. And again, goes to show just how creative and inspirational someone like a Tom Sachs is, right? But the most cool thing I thought, or the coolest thing I thought about the whole thing was this post. Or a screen grab from the documentary, I think, of the um, how to learn how to surf bullet points, right? The kind of uh, the 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 ten step process in, in order to kind of learn how to do most things. I think apart from surfing, take surfing out of the equation, just just apply this to anything you want to do in life. And I thought it was a pretty cool ideology and a pretty good methodology towards learning things. And again, goes to speak to just how creative and out the box and how. Tom Sykes kind of breaks things down into this, you know, into the easiest step possible for you to kind of understand. So here's a list of stuff I'm going to read out, right? It's available now on the screen for you to check out. But again, I'll put a link to the show if you guys to see yourself, you want to see, you check it out. So um, these are 10 bullet, 10 steps, 10, 10 commandments, let's say, to uh, understand how to learn, how to learn, how to surf or how to do anything. Number one, sacred space. Number two, learn the code. Number three, he understands. Number four, compare and despair. Number five, get in the boat. Number six, which has been highlighted out, be afraid, be sort of afraid. Uh, number seven, uh, APB. I'm not sure what that means. Number eight is fail with joy. Number nine is get hurt. Number 10, persistence. And I think the first um, two, obviously, are um, self-explanatory. The fact that you should have a sacred space where you go to practice something, where you go to learn how to do a certain thing. Um writing djing uh, learning how to graph i remember when i was trying to do my throw up on my hand style and trying to get that down pat it was just a process of just doing it again and again and again and again but mostly doing it mostly having a time and a period away from wherever i do having a space somewhere in my house so i can just sit down with a big pad of paper and just sketch over and over again my tag just keep keep writing it keep writing it keep writing it. i hope that over time i'll be able to kind of you know get better um, and now obviously number four number three three understand what to show sure that one um number four compare and despair i love that idea the idea that the best way to learn usually is the idea that you know is what's that austin klein book good art is still great artist copy no great good art is still great artist copy. i don't know whatever way around that title that that of that movie is or that book is sorry it's very true and best way to do it is to compare and obviously part of the reason part of the things that i've really enjoyed especially the last few years of me kind of really ramping up going out a lot especially when i've been djing i think sometimes you can get a little bit jaded a little bit um cynical when you start playing out places and you can think you can start to get a bit of a bit a bit not big big ego because sometimes overestimate how good you are especially when you're especially when there's some there's such a prevalence of club nights in london especially some of the more you know shittier ones that you can sometimes think how the hell do these guys get to play in this place right but most of the time if you've got the money you can play anywhere right you can just put a mat on and play for yourself and hopefully hope that 
some strangers can come along and tie you over and make sure you break even. So that's not to, you know, whatever. But I also like the fact that I'm able to go out. I think I learned this from Joey Diaz on his podcast, The Church of What's Happening Right Now. I remember him saying, you have to learn how to enjoy art and love things. So watching movies, um, going to the theatre, reading a great book, right? That will really um, kind of, especially from the top, top, top performers in any of their fields, that will really kind of open your mind up to creativity and also allow you to be a bit more humble and understand where you've kind of fall on the totem pole of creativity. So one of the best things about going to these big club nights, going to these big festivals like Junction 2 and stuff, you get to see the creme de la creme. And it really puts in perspective just how far away you are, but also just how far you've come in your journey. And it's and I would and I would kind of um, use the methodology of compare and despair. So I'm comparing myself to Dixon, and I'm also despairing of just how far ahead he is in terms of DJing technically, and it's also in terms of just taste level because of the years and years he spent listening to music, crafting stuff, editing stuff making remixes, signing people, listening to demos, playing in places, overhearing stuff, under here, wherever it may be. He's just got years of experience, so you can compare but despair. And then, um, of course, number five, get in the boat, which might mean just like, you know, go out there and do the work. I would assume, I haven't watched a movie, I'm just interpreting what I'm, I think of this. APB, I'm not too sure. This is maybe always be practicing. Um, number eight is fail with joy, which I love the idea that, you know, you're just crap at this thing, you're starting, you don't have any idea what you're doing. And it doesn't matter, really. I remember that's the same thing I used to... That's what really kind of pushed me over the edge when I started skateboarding at, like, an older age. Because um, I skateboarded a lot when I was younger. But then, if, if you know anything about skateboarding, uh, when I first skate, I think I must have been, like, 13 or 12 or something. And I did that up until I was 15, but then stopped until I was, about 21 and got back on a skateboard, which might as well... I might as well not skateboarded before, right? The fact that I, I jumped back on again when I was, like, over the age of 21... It was so difficult to do. Of course, when you're older, you're a lot more fearful. You don't want to jump. You don't want to throw yourself down a pair of stairs anymore or set of stairs, sorry. So it's a harder learning. It's a, it's a far harder learning curve. Um, it takes a while to learn how to jump off fingers to get fearless again. But the moment I started to kind of laugh at myself, not take myself too seriously and started to understand that, yeah, I know I know, I might, I know I might think I look good on a skateboard, but most of the time people can tell straight away just from the way you push that you're not good or you haven't been practicing for long or you haven't been doing it for a while. So there isn't any point in trying to pretend or trying to, you know, act like you're okay when you're not. So the moment I started to like accept that I'm going to fall a lot and I'm going to, you know, bust my ass for lack of a better term, the moment I started to improve and I started to drop, I started to fall, I started to slip, skip, stack it with absolute joy in my heart. And I absolutely loved it. Um, get hurt, of course, number nine and number 10 persistence, which is really the name of the game, isn't it? Right. Which is probably why I named my record label persistence records, isn't it? Check them out on SoundCloud. But, um, it's probably the name of the game. Definitely the name of the game. Persistence is the name of the game. I think I've seen for myself, especially being in the scene that I'm in, especially with the streetwear scene in general, especially the London kind of like streetwear, socialite community, hanging out scene. Everyone, anyone that kind of just hanged around long enough and just didn't leave and just kept going to, you know, gallery openings and store openings and activations and, you know, just putting their face around and going to the right party. They're still around now. Some of them have been lucky enough to be hired by some of the biggest brands on the scene, right? Which has been great. Of course, I wasn't willing to do that and it wasn't something I wanted to do. I took a different route. But everyone that just hung around long enough and persisted and just, you know, hung in there by the skin of their teeth or just was clawing away was inevitably left with an option to kind of, you know, get welcomed in, right? Someone opened the door and cracked the door open for them and it just slipped in there. So that's a big part of the game, really. It's not... I think talent and all that stuff is... You know, it can sometimes be a bit over uh, emphasized. I think the ability to kind of just do the work and show up day after day is probably more important than anything else. I would say in that regard, personally, I would I would put that up there with the with the top of it. But again, this is a Tom Sachs movie. It's available, I think, now in website. It's called How to Learn How to Surf. And again, I think this will work. This methodology will work for most people in most of the things they do in their life, I would say so. Um, I think it's available now in his section of your website, right? On the movie section. Yeah, I'm on it now. So it's on here now, the movie section of your site. Is it, do you purchase it or is it something that you just can watch for free? Oh, you can watch it. Okay, that's awesome. So it's available now to check out. Check out on his website now. I've got it here on the screen. All these other movies are checked on there too. If it's the FIFA Joe, which is great. You've got all these other, all these other movies. Again, one of my favorite um, contemporary eyes out there in the scene 
There's a reason why loads of other of your most there's a reason why most of the people you look up to in the scene look up to him as well. Um, don't sleep. Tom Sachs is a G. He is the guy. Um, great stuff overall. Definitely check it out if you're that way inclined. Great.